What's going on, George Mason University? Welcome back to the Press Box. I'm Vandy Bernard. I'm Perry Buckley. I'm Lindsay Hokinson. And I'm Demonte Shaw. Before we get the show rolling, we have some somber news. We have to say rest in peace to our Doc Nick's bobblehead who is no longer with us. If you please join us in a moment of silence. Thank you, George Mason University, for that special moment. We know he's in a better place now. He will be missed. But um, let's uh, try to transition to some rundown of some Mason sports. Men's tennis defeated Navy to improve the 3-1 three three over the weekend. And we're swinging over to DeMonte for the rest of the rundown. Um, so I want to spotlight the Mason Club ice hockey team. Uh, they just finished their season. Um, they won the last four of their five games, which is really great. Over that span of five games, they averaged 9.6 goals per game. And Brian Bach had the third most goals in the division with 27 goals. So congratulations to uh, the Mason Ice Club hockey team. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, make sure you support them next season in the fall. And uh, congratulations to you guys. Yes, indeed. Definitely. Big yeah. props. Also, um, uh, we just men's baseball just played Iona for the home opener, and where we won 12 to three. They improved to one and three overall. Anthony uh, Montefusco had a strong showing, going five innings, allowing only one run on four hits with seven strikeouts and two walks. It's pretty impressive. Um, even more impressive, Junior Blaze Fernandez finished the day two for four with two RBIs and two runs scored, as well as Junior Tucker Tobin. Uh, with a perfect four for four with four runs scored. So, congratulations to you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Yep, keep and, up the uh, good make work. Make sure you go out to support our men's baseball team. All right, and now let's talk about men's basketball. Win over M William and Mary, buzzer beater win. <laughs> let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty great. It was it was great. To run down the last play real quick, um, Brian Allen uh, drove in and um, Copes got a got a off the ball screen popped up for about a. Elbow shot with uh, you know 0.5 seconds left on the clock and drilled it and yeah. it was and then we you know ran down on defense and um, they they couldn't even get the ball in and yeah, we, they and we, still, we uh, came out with a nice win. Finished strong. It's about time. I mean, you know, it was kind of almost the same story. They were down by a pretty good amount in the second half. Mason fans are starting to think, here we go again. You know. <laughs> right, um, yeah. Uh, can't overcome this obstacle because it hasn't been happening in recent games, and it's about time they finally pulled one out. I yeah. mean, execution and you know that final shot, that big shot at the end, give it to a sophomore. Hey, props to the kid, yeah. get the yep. shot. Yep. So that's yes, indeed. Uh, you know, you know my favorite thing to talk about the turnovers, but for once <laughs> it's positive. We had a season low of six, and uh, on top of that, we had nine steals. So we made them turn the ball over more than we turned it over, which so a good should day. end up in a win, which it did. So. We also kept our kept our fouls down. We only had 17 fouls. Yeah. Normally, we average much more than that. No, yeah. That was not a great great plus. Yeah, I mean, Coach is in the game, so that means he didn't foul yes. out. <laughs> <laughs> it was different. Same with Him and both yeah. of them weren't in foul trouble yeah. late in the game, so that was excellent. So we need Finn. Yeah, I mean, it makes a big difference when you're in for the last play of the game. You can hit that game winning shot and you don't foul out. I mean, yeah. that's <laughs> what happens when True. you stay in the game. Yeah. But um. Yeah. And then yeah. rebounding. How's rebounding. that? Rebounding. Yeah. Um. We uh. We, we, we showed a win 86% of the time when we rebound uh, 40. When we grabbed 40 rebounds or more, uh, this game we had 40. So, I'll true point. to the stat, we won the game. Uh, we also had three double digit scores. We had Patrick Holloway, uh, 15 points, all on threes, five for seven. Uh, Brian Allen had 14, and Eric Copes had 10. So Let's take a second to talk about Patrick Holloway. What do you guys yes. think of this kid? Oh. <laughs> huh? He's so much promise. Unbelievable. Absolutely. I think you're going to start to see, I mean, Correct me if, if you think differently, but I think you're starting to see a power struggle between him and Sherrod Wright. Mm -hmm. Because I know um, a Sher Sherrod's young as well, but Patrick Holloway, I think it's gonna, he's going to start coming up, and it's eventually going to become his team. Yeah. I mean, the thing I like about Patrick Holloway, I mean, you know, yesterday was a little bit of a different story because he, he played a little bit more, but usually when he comes in, he hits the shots that you need, you know? And right. And he... Especially, yes, I mean, he's a streak shooter, so when he gets hot, he's really dangerous. He doesn't need a lot of space. He doesn't need a lot of time. You hit him, and he hits shots. And from a freshman, that's big time. That's yeah. really clutch. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I think Hewitt's come to rely on him to hit those big shots to get the team going. You, you'll find a lot of times after he hits a three, um, 
the team starts to react to that and respond to that. And, you know, he hits five. That's that's a significant amount of points. Yeah. And it really keeps the team in the game thinking, all right, if we need to bail ourselves out, we can't find it inside, hit, hit Patrick outside, out and we, yeah. can get that, we can pick up those points. And the crowd as well. The mm -hmm. crowd oh, really yeah. got into it late in the game. He got uh, a standing O when he left, too. Yes. Yeah, as well. Um, I, I did see, you know, he, he was very efficient, though, too, because 22 minutes, um, his plus minus was 10, which was the highest of anybody on the on the court or, you know, on the team. Um, but he, he played phenomenal, like yeah. you said, and really got the crowd into it. Because when he hit those big shots, the crowd was up on their feet, and it was, they were late in the game, they were clutch, and he has no hesitation. Just boom, up, and most of the time he's making it. Like you said, 71% 70, yesterday, or, yeah. or on, on Saturday. It was phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, only, only three shooters yesterday in double digits, but you come out with a win. I mean, I think that shows progression for the team, a team win. Yeah. Um, you know, finding points from all over the all over the court that makes a big difference we've we've talked about you know either it's the inside game or the outside game that's been that's been high and low and yesterday you find points from all over and that makes a big difference when you come into the end of a game late in the game you're relying on everyone you know to be a threat right you know when you're passing the ball around if you've only got one guy who's been scoring all night or another guy down low who you've been finding often when you've had you have a lot of players contributing it makes that last play a lot easier to run because yeah. it can come from anybody exactly that's so true and i mean who would have thought they would put the ball in coach <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> are you surprised they went to coach <laughs> yeah, yeah, I th yeah i think it got us all by surprise yeah definitely i went to the rundown i didn't even think i got the coach i'm like if it doesn't go to holloway it's gonna go to allen if it doesn't go to yeah. allen it's gonna go to Wright. not him arledge yeah one of those guys <laughs> shoot it. who else is on the court it's, it's Eric Cope. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After Holloway, though, you gotta you gotta shout out to Brian Allen as well. Yeah, he had a terrific indeed. game. Yeah, his defense. put up fourteen points. Yeah, and out of believe it was three steals. Yeah, he was playing really good defense though, and cre creating just creating havoc down there. It was yeah. it was great. Hey, we gave him grief to. last week. He we responded. Did. Yeah. He, he did respond. He responded fantastically. He did. <laughs> 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 he did. He did. And yeah. again, as you pointed out, to the consistent play, getting that balanced scoring from inside and out to make sure that opposing team doesn't know where it's going to come from and it definitely does wonders as, as evident on that last play so definitely helped us out definitely got that great win Any, anything else that we want to point out to that stood out to us in the game yesterday that allowed us to get that big victory again another big conf uh, CAA win conference win I mean it, it the momentum that it's given us it snapped a three game home losing streak and it didn't just snap it I mean it beat it with an exciting game yeah. and um, a comeback win, and both of those things prove that there's some fight to this team, some character to this team that we were questioning. And I think it's exciting for the fans because not only do we get an exciting game, but we see, all right, this team has heart. You know, they exactly. they battle back from 13 down. I think with 11 minutes left. Again, mm -hmm. like I said, every other game we're thinking, oh man, it's done, yep. over. You know, 13 yeah, points turn down. Into a blowout. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like but the homecoming game. <laughs> they battled. They battled, and they found it in the youth, which is what the team is comprised mm -hmm. of. And um, heading into you know the last last home game. That's important. That's important for the fans. It's important for the team. It's important for the coaching staff because now you've got people thinking, all right, this team's going to fight for us. You know, this team's – last week we were talking about how sad it was to be a Mason fan right now because they're not <laughs> winning at home. Yeah. You get a good win at home. Now yep. we've got a last game on Tuesday against a good team in Towson. Yeah. And you want people to come out to cheer for your team. And Finish the only way strong. you're going to do that is if you get a good, solid win – you know, or a win that you fight for. And so out of anything, at least it, it gives us some momentum heading into, you know, the last few games or this this last game at least and then into the tournament. Yeah. And it was a it was a tough, gritty win. As yeah. as we mentioned last week, how we really didn't see the team from last year at mm -hmm. all. And how, you know, every home game it was almost like, oh, you know, we got this. You know, we, we were spoiled last year mm -hmm. because, you know, the, the the stars of the team would, would step up and we would always pull it out. Yeah. Uh, this was a great game, a momentum changer. Really great game, um, yeah. I really hope they finish out this season strong, and uh, they really got it done on the defensive end as well. And, That's um, where it starts. Yeah. I like how they spread the ball around on offense. You know, like like Lindsey said, um, you know, didn't have really any star star scores, but everyone scored. So that was that was a great great aspect of the game. Yeah, I, I was impressed with uh, Marco as well. I mean, you look at the stat line; it didn't look that impressive, but the points that he had, he he got there with ease. I mean, he he has some moves, he has some promise too. So we keep developing our young guys and. Getting our getting our rotation, we we can make a push in the CAA tournament. I mean, we talked about. I don't remember last week. Marco is an outside and inside threat, and that's mm -hmm. why they brought him here is because mm -hmm. he is that dynamic player. He wasn't hitting shots, but he was getting looks. And I think like when he finally has found himself and found those those drives to the basket, like you said, making it look easy. That kind of thing is what they expect out of him. It's an experienced player. He's young. He's got a lot of experience at the national team level. 
and that type of talent should translate into the college game and it wasn't showing through and as he starts to find his rhythm I think it's really promising for the team because he can be a threat from outside and from inside mm -hmm. his size yeah, but also definitely. his stroke and everything um, make him someone to 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 be worried about so um, so let's let's talk about Towson. Towson on Tuesday night. We talked about them a few weeks ago. How they've come from the bottom to the top this yeah. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dangerous team. What are, what? Are we, how are we going to match up against Towson? I think if we come out how we played against William and Mary, more, more specifically in the second half, just that good defense, that balanced, consistent score inside out, that it we um, definitely have a chance to win the game. So it just comes to consistency, consistent play, and as you alluded to earlier having the momentum and use that momentum from the game against William & Mary and use it against Townsend. Also guarding the three-point line. Uh, William & Mary hit, I believe it was 15 threes, um, which is a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, we only had five, and they were all from Holloway, as, as you mentioned. Um, but really, you know, trying to push them off the line and, and force them inside where we have good, you know, interior, def interior defenders. Yeah, keep that grit up, you know. <laughs> Stay in that man's face. Yeah. I mean, when we played at Towson, we won. Um, game was on TV. Um, played pretty consistent basketball. Played pretty well throughout the entire game. Kept it close. Um, so I think did we win? We did win, right? Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. Okay, I got a little worried, but no, <laughs> we did. And you know, that's that was a big win because when you went on the on the road, obviously it's always nice. But then you come home. We've had issues at home this year. Yeah. So um, coming off of this win, now it's now we have to to repeat, and we've had issues with that this year. Yeah. Um, so. Again, like we were talking about, balanced offense, strong defense is going to be really crucial. Um, making sure that we're not turning the ball over, that we're rebounding. You know, all, all the solid, sound things you need to do to win a basketball game. When this team executes, we are a dangerous team. And, it, you know, our coaches always say, if there's a good time to get hot, it's the end of the year. And, you know, yeah. as fans, I think that's something we can accept. You know, if we start, you know, really clicking heading into the CAA tournament, We'll forget about the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, we will. <laughs> All that matters is is after we finish out the season, we find that seating, making sure that those games we're playing, like, something matters. Yeah. And so hopefully we continue the momentum and build it into the Townsend's game. And real quick, do you want to run down some of the upcoming yeah, games? Yeah, sure. Favorite? Some of the upcoming coming games we have. Um, Tuesday, uh, men's basketball versus Towson, Tals as you said, at home at 7 p.m. Wednesday, swimming and diving uh, is going, going against the CAA championships at 10 a.m. So wish them best of luck in the, the championships yeah. there. Thursday, we have uh, women's basketball on UNC Wilmington at 7 p.m., also at home in the Patriot Center. And then Friday, we have a bunch of games. Uh, baseball versus Fair Fairfield at 2.30 p.m. Softball uh, has the Patriot Classic this, this upcoming weekend, so they believe they have four games um, on Friday and Saturday. And then women's lacrosse versus Bucknell at 7. And men's volleyball versus Harvard at 7 p.m. So wish you the best of luck in those upcoming games, guys. Yes. Absolutely. Thursday is senior night for the women's basketball team, so it's a, a big night for them. Definitely. Um, and that CA championships for someone die, that's going to be a marathon. That's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, Saturday. Um, it goes all the way through the weekend. Lots of events, lots of uh, lots of really great swimmers so uh, and divers. So make <laughs> sure that if you do get a chance, drop by. I mean, Definitely. it's it's a real Definitely. easy thing to go watch. You get to stay inside. Don't have to worry about the elements. Yeah. And, it's uh, free. It's free. And it's free. <laughs> it's free. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely worth worth the trip. Indeed, yeah. So definitely make sure to check out the Russell Mason athletes and all the great events coming up this week, throughout the week. And keep it locked right here. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on the Press Box. Welcome George Mason University back to the press box. I'm Andre Howard. And again, we want to welcome you back. All right, guys, so all-star break's done for the NBA, back in the swing of things. What are our mid-season awards of running down things? Uh, start with MVP, kind of kind of hard to dispute that. Lebanon James. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron, I mean, LeBron, yeah. 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 Thank you. I'm going to be different. I'm going to go with Chris Paul. Oh. No, Chris Paul, you know, just be different. Oh. You know LeBron is balling. Chris Paul is leading his team. You know they're they're, they're no slouches in the West. Mm -hmm. right. Any any other particular reason why why Chris Paul? No, not really. Just this one be different, man. All right. Yeah. All right. Can't do change. I agree with LeBron. You can't dispute that. 
the way he's playing and the way he's got that team playing right now, it's yeah. not whether a ten game win streak. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's literally playing like no one else in history. <laughs> really? Really? Uh, <laughs> 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 you look at his numbers and what he's doing, uh, the thirty plus, mm-hmm. um, six straight games right. on over sixty percent shooting. Yeah. And just triple double his third triple double double this season, uh, he just got that. I mean But man. how long can this last? That's that's the big question. Can he can he sustain this for the rest of the season? And in, into the He play? doesn't need to. Yeah. I mean, they're 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 blowing teams out right now. Yeah. yeah. And he's putting up those numbers. And um you know, Dwayne Wade's Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. Dwayne Wade. <laughs> it's not yeah, yeah thirty three last Dwayne night. Wade, yeah. Uh, you know, you know, if if LeBron takes a step back a little bit, you know, Dwayne's numbers will increase, I believe. He had a big Don't forget about Chris Boss. <laughs> <laughs> he even Boss. shows up on some nights. <laughs> <laughs> some nights. <He's> <laughs> now, if you asked me a few weeks before LeBron went on his tear, I would have probably said Durant because OKC was at the top of the NBA. But now they kind of spread it a little bit, so it's hard to go against LeBron James right now. What about Tony Parker? Tony Parker. Can't, can't forget Parker about Tony. Tony Parker, I feel because of – the Spurs and just where they're always at because they're always they're always at the top always gets overlooked yeah and the way they play they play a, like team ball yeah when you think of the Spurs not flashy you, think of the Spurs, you can't think of just one guy like you can't say Tony Parker without saying Tim Duncan or Ginobili oh, yes or yeah. even Kawhi Leonard yeah now. I mean it's just the nature of their team it's it's hard to get the MVP there they, they are they are well coached <laughs> they are well yep. coached. Yeah. Popovich should get it yeah he's <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move on to our rookie of the year uh, for me it was almost what I go with my Wizards and Bradley Beal, but had to do Damian Lillard from the Blazers. He's doing his thing right now. Think, think right now. I would say head of shoulders, but he is leading the pack for Work of the Year right now. What do you guys think? I, t- I can agree with you more. Like Portland's in the playoff race. You know, I'm like you know Washington. They, they are coming on. You know, they're doing mm. better. But like that first half, you, you cannot forget about yeah. that. So yeah. I take the big part in it. Oh, I, I actually would go with Bradley Beal. I mean, okay. I right. think he gets. Thanks for shout out to my Wiz, yeah, by the way. <laughs> uh, I think it's because of the team that he's on. The Wizards, they just have a way of just, just sucking the life out of a player's career, man. Ouch. And then they go somewhere else. Ouch. And there's so much better. Going on my Wizards. I mean, I think, if Brad, I think if you switch the teams, like if Bradley was on Portland and Damian was on the Wizards, we'd be like Bradley Beal, like no contest. Like, there's something about, I don't know what it is, but I like Bradley Beal. He, he's been putting up his numbers. Uh, Push Jordan Crawford out. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the man there. Besides John Wall, I, I like Bradley Beal. Bradley, good. he's been playing. I'm gonna agree with you with Damian. Well, both of you with Damian Lillard, Lillard. But I I uh, I agree that I mean Beal's been playing really really well. He's increased his numbers every single month, um, points wise. Yeah. He's. I mean, if he can continue continues to do that, there's no reason why he can't you know challenge Lillard for the rookie of the year. But yeah. right now, I, I, I don't see anyone. I don't even want to take it besides Lillard. Yeah. Bill, get out of D.C. <laughs> well, let's move on from this guy hitting on my Wizards now. <laughs> let's move on to uh, the Defensive Player of the Year. This was a tough one because unlike past years where you've had somebody where you know, yes, they're the Defensive Player of the Year, which has been Dwight Howard, but because of the season, he's having, having an off year. And Tyson Chandler not really have the season that he had last year. For me, it's Joe Kim Noah as my Defensive Player of the Year. 2.1 blocks on the season. This again, it's a tough one, but who do you, who do you guys have for the D play of the year? Let's drop City. <laughs> um, I mean, in my opinion, like no player for me has really stood out. So if I had to pick someone, it'd probably be someone from Chicago because they're, yeah. in my opinion, they're the best defensive team in the league. So I, I'd agree with Joe Kim Noah. He's, okay, he's been doing his thing. Yeah, I pretty much agree with both of you guys. Um, but I could see Dwight Howard probably making a run because he's getting healthier. He's getting more comfortable in LA now. So watch out for him. Yeah, I like again Chicago's defense is just stifling. They're, yeah, they're one of the best defensive teams in the league. But I also like Serge Ibaka, um, averaging three blocks a game. Serge, he's, he's 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 having another good uh, good season. Yeah, indeed. And I can see. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move on to Coach of the Year. Coach of the Year. I'm, this one's a lot of good candidates for Coach of the Year for this one. For me, it was tough. I narrowed it down a couple, but. I'm going to go with Frank Vogel for the Indiana Pacers. I just feel they don't really have a superstar on their team, and yet they're sitting third in the East right now, could possibly catch New York since they've been on a decline lately. And Frank Vogel hasn't played. He really hasn't played ball. So I'm going to take him as my coach of the year. Yeah. I got Mark Jackson in uh, Golden State. 
He's got a nice young team down there. Hand Howard. down, man yeah. down. Exactly. I like the culture he's installing in them, going back to some old school basketball. Um, and he's got them in the playoff running, so I, I think they can make a big push, and I like what he's doing there. So, Mark Jackson. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with uh, Greg Pop from San Antonio. I mean, his core gets older and older, but look at him. They're still number one in the league. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's nothing, nothing you argue about. That's, that's great coaching. Yeah. Like, that's all I can see. Like, I know he has Tony Parker, Tim Duncan, and Manu, but they are getting up there. Like, Duncan's, what, like 36, 37? Yeah, about 36, yeah. You know? Old. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's, he's old. He's, he's, he's still he's old. Yeah. Number, still he's playing, playing at a high level. Yes. <laughs> still dunking on people too. <laughs> <laughs> Popovich is always in the mix, but for me, I agree with you with, with uh, Mark Jackson. Um, Warriors are, are doing their thing, and over there in Golden State, they're uh, they're playing really well. I think they're they're going to be a team that I don't think people are going to pl- play in the, yeah. in the first round of the Great playoffs. Team yeah. and had that big win over the Spurs uh, over the weekend. Mm-hmm. And big win over the Spurs in overtime. So that was a good, a good win indeed. All right, so as to uh, six man of the year, uh, for me, this is no competition. Yeah. I don't know for anybody else. Jamal Crawford, yeah. a.k.a. Hot Sauce. <laughs> There's no competition <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I don't think we need to discuss yeah. this one at all. Yeah. Next. <laughs> all <right. laughs> Most improved player. Maybe a little bit more discussion for me. This is the man with two first names. He doesn't need a last. Paul George. That's my most improved player for me. Uh, you just look at a third year in the league, averaging around 18, 19 per game. Again, no real superstar on his team. Danny Granger just came back over the weekend, so he's been out. But they've been playing well. Again, third in the East right now. And Paul George has been playing consistent throughout the whole season. I think he's definitely improved. What do you guys think? The Montez over here laughing. You talk, you talking about my Wizards again or something? <laughs> Yeah, I was going to uh, go John Wall, but he only played two times. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> no, oh. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm uh-huh. Just okay. <laughs> um, gosh, can I go Kyrie? I mean, he was good last year, but he's even better now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> Kyrie Irving, most of them. I would totally agree with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as a rookie, you know, he was I mean, he was <laughs> Yeah. He's came as a full-blown superstar. He's even more of a man. <laughs> I'm going to go team. with my, my Philadelphia homeboy, uh, Drew Holiday. Drew! He, he has been he has been balling out lately, averaging, uh, you know, with, with the lack of Andrew Bynum. He's, uh, and Doug Curl. Collins has really given him <laughs> given him the team, and uh, he's averaging, you know, 19 points a game and about nine assists a game. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to take him for most, most of the player. Okay. All right. I'll say, you know, um, Verja from Cleveland before he got injured. Mm-hmm. He, he was honestly yeah. most improved. Yes. Yeah. Him and Kyrie, they were, that, was a, that was a good duo. Mm-hmm. I was actually even going to have him as my defensive player of the year because he's averaging, he led the league in rebounding around over 14 rebounds a game before he went down and unfortunately out for the season. But that was going to be my defensive player of the year. Yeah, he snatches those boards. He does. He does. <laughs> well, what do we think for, in terms of predictions for the second half of the season? And what do we think are going to happen? Do we think, we think the Lakers going to make the playoffs? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. Kobe, Kobe Bryant has a, a willpower similar to Jordan. Maybe maybe he can will that team to. Made the that guaranteed. Said that. Well, of course. What I mean, you would expect anything less from Kobe Bryant, yeah. but he guaranteed that they make the playoffs. I don't know. They're chasing Houston right now, though, and Houston's hot. They're oh, yes. playing really well. Both Harden and Lynn are, oh, yeah. are on fire right now. Mm-hmm. So if they continue on this run that they have, it's going to be really hard for the Lakers to catch them because I believe they're four games back. Yeah, about and three and a half, four, yeah. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. going to be hard. Yeah. I mean, that little thing called, you know, the first half of the season was real messed up the Lakers. So it's going to be tough. Like, they Maybe really, dug they really themselves too deep of a hole. Yeah. So what? It's going to be tough for them. But again, you can never count on Kobe Bryant. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, you never count him out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I'm, I'm going to say they make it in because – I think Houston's still going to get in, but a team I don't really trust that's in the playoff run right now, I think they're about seventh right now, it's Utah. And I don't know if Utah Utah yeah. can stay in there because they had most of their – they struggle on the roads at times. I think they've had they've had most of their home games already out the way now, so they're going to be playing on the road. I, I don't know if I could trust Utah. Good team, good young team, but I don't know if I could trust them to stay in that playoff mix. And if – again, as you mentioned, Kobe Bryant's willpower. Last couple of games, Dwight has turned it up a little bit. When yeah. Pau Gasol comes back, if D'Antoni could get Gasol and Howard to work together instead of just having one on the court at the same time, I think they can make it in. Because yeah. you're talking about Gasol, one of the most versatile big men in the game right now. He could play about 12, 15 feet and hit, hit that consistent shot. I think if you could work them all out on the court, that they 
might be able to sneak in. Still going out in the first round, but they, <laughs> sneak, they can sneak in. Because <laughs> that's the thing. If they get in, they're going to sneak in as the last seed. Yeah. Or possibly seventh seed. Yeah. And then you're going to be facing, you know, San Antonio, OKC. Okay, yeah. yeah. Or possibly Clippers. Clippers. Lob, so, yeah. Yeah. Lob City. So, yeah. I don't, it's it's, it's going to be tough. tough. For them. Yeah. Yeah. But, like I said, unless Jordan just possesses Kobe and. <laughs> I don't know. Yo, they'll have to put some, some Space Jam like <laughs> magical turnaround. Like Mon stars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what uh, what other predictions we have? I mean, right now, the again Spurs just being the Spurs taking over for best record in the league right now. OKC's kind of sputtered a little bit over the past couple of weeks. What what's going on there in OKC that we might think they've fallen off? Is it is it is it really showing now that they miss Harden that much? I don't believe yet, you know, because Kevin Martin has been a really good scorer, really providing, you know, the off the bench points. But they're going to miss Harden's creativity because he, he pretty much, he goes through the hole, he do whatever he wants. Kevin Hart's more of like, you know, I need somebody to facilitate than to take, than take control over anything. Yeah. I agree. Harden gave an instant spark off the bench. He put him in and it was, you know, just add water and you're getting points, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I agree, they need to be a little bit more creative how they're using uh, Kevin Martin. He's He's been doing a really good job at filming yes, well. Yes, um, yes. Uh, you know, it really highlights him um, being on a better team, a playoff yeah. playoff contender. Um, yeah. It highlights his, his skills. But... Um, but he's they both been playing well. I don't I don't really think that um they they miss Harden that much. Yeah, I think they need for uh, Russell Westbrook to just mature and grow up, realize his role on the team. I mean, you've got Kevin Durant leading the league and scoring the last three years. You probably shouldn't be taking more shots <laughs> than Kevin Durant. Not at all. <laughs> I mean, he he's, he's done he's done better game. this year than last year though. He's yeah. definitely yeah. improved. I mean, again, out of college he's a, he's a two guard. Yeah. So coming in, I mean, still you can still he's adjustment. still making that transition, but yeah. he's improved. But again, as you said, he has to realize Kevin Durant is one of the best players in the league. That he should be taking the majority of the shots. It just comes down to better shot selection for Russell. And then if you want to take that role, act the role. Don't be throwing temper tantrums if you want to be like the leader. Like, you can't do that. That looks bad on your team it does. as a whole. So Nobody wants to follow a guy like that. Exactly. It does. That's, that's no way to lead a team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's almost you. Uh, Durant is so modest of a leader. Yeah. You, you almost, I don't know how vocal he is, you know, in the locker room. It's, just, it's almost, Durant, step in and say something yeah. to him. Because <laughs> that's, that's unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. The Durant has been working on it. You know, his, like, new old yes. bad persona is mm -hmm. going around. But, like, Second in the league in text behind Kobe <laughs> Bryant. <laughs> 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 yeah, so like, it's, he's he's working on it, but he just he's, he's a quiet guy, mm -hmm. you know. He's like you know he's more behind the scenes. I'm gonna get my points. I'm gonna do it my way, and you know wherever the team goes, it's gonna go. Yeah. So like you say, he needs to be more vocal about it. But he's all about improving. Yeah. And anything he can do to help their team win exactly. a championship, he's gonna do. Exactly. So if he needs to become a better leader, he's gonna reach out to you know some some legends or s somebody to help him. Yeah, to, some uh, of the greats. You know, yeah. Exactly. Even you know LeBron, he's been practicing with LeBron and yeah. seeing how he's Helping handled everything. Exactly. Yeah, in Miami, so that's sure. you know we'll see if that shapes him into a better leader there in OKC. Yeah. Speaking of Miami, who's who's who has a chance to take down Miami in the East? I mean. I got nobody. I got nobody. <laughs> I got nobody. Miami's winning the East. Yeah, Miami will win the East, but the Pacers watch out for them. They'll give them some. They'll they'll be the toughest competition. Yeah, to see that matchup. They'll give them the toughest competition because it was a good good series last year. Some of those highlights. Man. That's <laughs> that was a physical. Basketball. I like to watch. Mm -hmm. You talk about old school eighties basketball, right there, right? Exactly. Right. I might get kind of Boston too, though. Boston. <laughs> hey, I don't, mean, yeah, yeah, don't sleep. Yeah, they can't year. sleep. We can't sleep on Boston even without yeah. Rondo. Can't sleep on them. They've I, been playing even they know. They know Miami. Toe. They yeah. they have. We made a couple of trades, you know. Yeah. Trying to, yeah, trying to do Crawford. something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> got some scoring threat. Big name superstar. Indeed. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens with the rest of the season. Again, reaching down to home stretch in the NBA season. Um, once again, we want to thank you, George Mason University, for joining us right here inside the press box. I'm Vandy Bernard. I'm Perry Buckley. I'm Andre Howard. I'm Demonte Shaw. Remember, check us out on Facebook and Twitter on Facebook, The Press Box. Leave us comments, questions. Look out, we got some big things coming up. Anything you want us to debate on the show, leave us comments on our page. Check us out at Press Box GMU, and we'll see you guys next week. Take it easy. Stay classy, George Mason. Hey. Thanks for watching.